Hi everyone, it's Michael. Now I realize it feels like I've been gone forever, but I've really only been gone for less than a week. Uh, but thank you guys so much for checking in on me. I am still very much present. I am going to continue producing content as I have been, so you have nothing to worry about. Um, today's video is all about something that I think is really important, which is understanding the basics of orchid fertilizer. So what we're gonna do today is we're gonna break down the composition of that fertilizer, but we're also going to try to understand how using the right fertilizer at the right time can really support your objectives through different growth stages with your orchids. So what I have in front of me are two different kinds of orchid fertilizer. They're both from the brand Growmore, which I really like. I think they make a quality product and it lasts forever. But I have the balanced orchid formula here, which is 20-20-20. And then I have the uh, urea free formula at 20-10-20. Now, you might be wondering, well, what are those numbers that you're rattling off? The numbers that I'm rattling off are, in order, nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium. So the numbers actually refer to the percentage by weight of each of those elements. So for example, a balanced formula is going to have 20% nitrogen, 20% phosphorus, and 20% potas potassium. <laughs> really, doesn't that add up to 60%, not 100%? Yeah, you're absolutely right, because those are what we consider macronutrients. Uh, or the elements that are needed in a higher quantity. But there are also other pieces to that puzzle, and those are called micronutrients. So I'm gonna give you a breakdown of what all of those are. Nitrogen's contribution to this equation is that it's really gonna help support healthy foliage development and stem growth. So think of it as the food for the green portion of your plant, everything that's above the, the soil or the bark or the leca beads. Um, then we're gonna talk about phosphorus, which really contributes primarily to healthy root development and flower production. So think of it as nourishing that element of the equation. Um, and then potassium really just strengthens the plant tissue and overall immunity of the orchid. So uh, it impacts its ability to fight off things like bug infestations or a virus. Uh, so it's just the overall wellness of the plant. Now there are also other macronutrients. Um, the ones that contribute to food production are gonna be carbon, hydrogen, magnesium, and oxygen. Um, of course, carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen, those are already gonna be present in the air, so it's not something that you actually have to look for in a fertilizer. Those are already present here in the air. <laughs> um, then there's calcium, which really helps with cell wall formation. We also have, um, what am I forgetting? Oh, sulfur. Sulfur combines with nitrogen and phosphorus to produce proteins, so that's an important part of the system. And then we also have micronutrients. Now, the micronutrients are really important because what they do is they are, they're catalysts in really important chemical reactions that happen inside of the plant. So even though you don't need a huge amount of them, they do need to be present to kind of facilitate things. And those are boron, chlorine, copper, iron, manganese, molybdenum, and zinc. So that's kind of the general breakdown of the nutrients that are required by an orchid. Now, there is something to consider when you're trying to shop for a fertilizer, which is that you may have those elements represented in your environment already. So just like I was talking about with the hydrogen, oxygen, and carbon, we know that those are already in the air. That's not something that you actively have to add to the equation. But if we're talking about, what am I thinking? Um, magnesium or calcium, those are the primary things that are present in tap water. That's what, that's what determines the hardness of a water. So if you're watering your plants with the tap water, know that those are probably already represented, so you can probably omit it from your uh, orchid fertilizer solution. It's not imperative because it's already getting it somewhere else. So those are kind of the considerations that need to be made. So there are different types of fertilizers that support different objectives. So let's take, for example, a bloom booster. Well, what is a bloom booster? It's supposed to support the development of blooms. And how it does that is it's going to generally offer a reduced amount of nitrogen, which tells the plant, okay, we're not focusing so much on the plant development anymore. We're focusing on roots and we're focusing on the flower spike. Side note here, don't use too high of a phosphorus content on it because that can actually prevent blooming. Uh, so you wanna make sure you're using it in, in moderation within reason. Um, but that's the general idea. So it triggers the plant to say, okay, we're not growing the plant anymore. We're gonna work on the blooms now. Um, and so that's kind of the concept behind it. And then you also wanna make sure you're using it at the right time. So if you're using a bloom booster, the appropriate time to do it would be two to three months before the blooms start to appear. So it can really invest that energy in developing more bountiful, more beautiful blooms. So this really brings us to a discussion of how to. So I'm gonna to refer to something that's an old adage, but I feel like it's very, very uh, helpful. And it's 
Fertilize weekly, weekly, meaning weekly, W-E-A-K-L-Y, weekly, W-E-E-K-L-Y. And the reason we wanna do weekly, weekly is again, we're trying to replicate what's happening in nature. So think about how it works um, when an orchid is growing on a tree in the wild. It's periodically getting dead bugs that come down. It's periodically getting some runoff from other uh, decaying parts of plant matter that are coming down from the tree. But it's not using all of it. Orchids are not heavy feeders. So you want to kind of mimic that of this mixture of um, nutrient content coming down pretty regularly. So weekly, weekly means that you're going to take your fertilizer solution and you're going to provide it on a regular basis at a weak concentration. So I think that's really important to know that when you move forward, so let's take this one for example, and we're going to go in close on these in just a moment and kind of break down the composition. But this one recommends using one teaspoon per gallon of water. The way that I use it is I actually do a half a teaspoon per gallon of water because I know that I'm going to be using it as a regular and constant feed. Especially in a semi-hydroponic environment, the, the nutrient solution is always present. So you want to make sure that it's not so high that it's going to cause fertilizer burn, which it can do if it's in too high of a concentration. So weekly, weekly, you can do it that way. If you want to be extra safe when you introduce a new fertilizer to your plants, you could even start using it at a quarter of the recommended concentration. Ray Barkalau recommends taking the number 10 and dividing it by the percentage of nitrogen in your fertilizer. So in my Grow More Balanced formula, for example, the percentage is 20. So I would take 10 divided by 20, and that's going to give me 0.5. So I know that I'm going to use a half a teaspoon of orchid fertilizer every time I water. So that's a really good uh, guiding rule of thumb, uh, but you can tweak and modify as you see fit. I would just start on the lower end of the spectrum to be safe. So let's go in a bit closer on these and talk through the contents. What we have here is my Grow More Orchid Premium Orchid Food at a balanced formula of 20-20-20. Now, if we go and take a look at the guaranteed analysis, you'll see everything that we were just discussing. So, we have a total nitrogen of 20%, we have phosphorus at 20%, and we have potassium at 20%. That's what makes it a balanced formula. But if we take a look at the micronutrients, we also see that it has copper, iron, manganese, molybdenum, and zinc represented. So the question is, do we have every single macronutrient and micronutrient represented that's necessary for orchid development? No. Can we rest assured that those elements are represented in the air around us and possibly in the tap water? Yes. That's why I'm not so worried about it not having every single element represented here. I feel fine about this. Now, if we cross-reference it with the urea free version, we're going to see almost the identical information. The big distinction here is the phosphorus is only available at 10%, and when we look at the composition, we see it's 8%, um, I don't know how to say that, ammoniacal, ammoniacal <laughs> nitrogen uh, versus nitrate nitrogen at 12%. But when we look at the version with urea, we can see that the breakdown is a little different. It's 3.9, 5.7, and then urea constitutes 10.4%. So what's the big difference? In addressing that question, I would be completely remiss if I gave you a definitive answer. So this has been a topic of contention in the orchid community for quite some time, but the urea versus urea free discussion is ongoing. So some of the dominant knowledge or some of the dominant practice, I should say, not the dominant knowledge, says that Urea is only effective in plants that grow in the soil because there's a bacteria present that helps to convert the urea into nitrates that are available to the plant. But because orchids are primarily epiphytic and they're growing on trees, they don't have that bacteria to support the, um, to support the nutrient availability of urea as nitrates. So most orchid growers will tell you, and long held belief is that you should do a urea free formula. But here's what I'll say. I just picked up the urea free formula yesterday. I've been using the balanced formula for, gosh, now like four months, five months, and I haven't seen anything negative come from it. So I think a lot of people see that urea can be harmful, but I, I really want to kind of identify exactly how it's harmful. Because in theory, the only adverse side effect that I have seen is mineral buildup. So if the urea is not readily available to the orchid, then it has to go somewhere. So it's probably just gonna hang out on the leca pellets and result in mineral buildup. So I'm wondering if the mineral buildup is the more destructive side effect of the urea and not its actual presence in the system. So I don't actually know, 
But um, <laughs> of course, I'm going to make a video on it. I just picked this up because what I'm gonna do is I'm going to um, begin watering my orchids with the urea-free formula and see if I see any general difference. But I'm also gonna do a side-by-side -side comparison with sister orchids or orchids that are as similar as possible. Um, so I can kind of get a snapshot side-by-side -side of how these two orchid, for, uh, how these two formulas are really going to impact its development and the overall experience of the plant. So I don't have an answer for urea versus urea free. Um, I have my suspicions about it, but um, I do look forward to <laughs> conducting this experiment and giving you a greater, uh, I don't know, a greater snapshot, a more informed snapshot of uh, what I think it does. So, as always, thank you guys so much for spending your time with me. Uh, feel free to like, comment, subscribe. If you have any, um, if you have any resources or insights or articles that you think I should read as I approach this discussion about urea versus urea free, please leave them in the comment section below. Um, I would really, really love to read up more on it. And you know, I feel so grateful to have your support. You guys have guided me towards so many different things that I would have never found if it wasn't for you. So always feel free to tell me those things because it really helps me um, give you the most relevant information. So um, I don't know what else to say. I love you guys. I'm back. I'm ready to make some videos. And I hope you have a beautiful rest of your day. Mwah. Bye, guys.